I've been having this interesting conversation with a couple of people recently. And that's this idea that people who believe in God can be witches and witches can believe in God. Now there was a time where I was resistant to anything that had anything to do with Christianity, including using the term God. Originally, when I started forming my idea of what I believed spiritually, I would call it the great and powerful because that was of everything that I could come up with, the most unique thing I could come up with without using God, source, spirit, cosmic consciousness. And eventually, over time, as I started to realize that all religions come from, you know, every denomination of every religion comes from religion, and even those religions come from source religions, and they all point back to the universal laws. So what I started to realize in all of this is that our identities and our resistance to things are closely attached. Because I considered myself a witch, because I was still not past the point of labels, anything using the term prayer, using the term God, I had a resistance to them using those terms to describe anything I was doing or anything close to what I was doing felt bad for me. And what I came to realize was that we all have things like this, whether they be things we're resistant to adopting or they be things we're resistant to letting go. Even addicts will have a hard time letting go of doing drugs because doing drugs have become a part of their identity. And so anything that we associate with our identities are going to be things that can create resistance in our lives. And we don't want to have resistance in our lives. Why would we? any resistance in our lives keep us from being happy. And at the very least, even if it's not ecstatic with joy, it keeps us from maintaining our above neutral state of emotional being. So I went from pondering the universe to landing on what my idea of source, spirit, cosmic consciousness would be to now being able to talk about the idea that even if I consider myself a witch for just the sake of trying to explain to others what my spiritual practice looks like, I am no longer attached to the concept of being a witch, nor am I attached to the concept of source being different from God. Most people, when they hear the word God, they assume that someone is talking about an anthropomorphic guy in the sky with a beard, pearly gates, the whole nine yards. But here's the thing is actually all of the modern Christians that I've met actually believe in something closer to source. Not to say that that's all of them, but many of them believe in something closer to a source energy than an anthropomorphic guy in the sky. We all have things that we attach to our identities. We all have things, whether they be good or bad, that we end up being resistant to because of what we associate with our identity. And these are big things to watch out for because like I said, the more we are resistant, the less happy we'll be. And most often these are things that we have no need to be resistant to. 
all sorts of things when it comes to the identity are just labels and using them for the sake of, as I've explained earlier, explaining to other people what you're doing, that's fine. But it's when we start deeply associating who we are with those labels that we start to have a problem and that we start to find resistance in our lives. So just like the idea that witches could believe in God rather than multiple gods and goddesses or a spirit energy, maybe a nature spirit energy. Why not call it God if it's similar to what other people consider God? We all get hung up on these details and they're all details that in the grand scheme of things don't matter unless we're sitting down and having a conversation about it, and then we're better off explaining those things rather than using singular labels for them anyway to get to know each other. So I want you to start asking yourself, when you experience resistance, how is that associated with what you consider your identity? This can be things like politics, religion, life in general, relationships, I guarantee you, anything that you find yourself bothered by, resistant towards, is associated with how you identify yourself and your identity. I don't think I've ever found somebody who didn't have their resistance associated with or attached to their identity. That's what happens. The only other option is when it's associated with someone else. And even then that's attached to your identity because you strongly associate that other person to your identity, whether it be their love, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see where I'm going with this? So the next time that something makes you upset, follow it back. Ask yourself, what do I identify with that makes me upset about this? And do I really need to be upset about this? Or could I recognize that this is something I could be letting go? Like the definition of God. Who cares? We can all call whatever it is we consider God, God. What does that matter to somebody else? It doesn't take away from your belief. It doesn't take away from your feeling for whatever entity it is that you believe in. For someone else, to call what they believe in the same thing. It's just a word. And it's only the meaning you give to it that matters. We're about to get all up in that. <laughs> in my spirituality 2.0. And we got a little bit into it in my spirituality 101. <laughs> spirituality 101 series over on Patreon. So if you want to learn more about how everything is actually meaningless, you should definitely go check that out. But yeah, start noticing. Start noticing whenever you're bothered by something and start tracking that back to where within your identity that resistance comes from. Thank you guys for joining me for another video. I am well on my way to start doing daily videos, so stay tuned. I'm not quite there yet, but every day I'm getting more and more videos prepared. So if not this week, by next week, we will have a daily video every day. <sighs> Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. 
including my Patreon link where you can find my Spirituality 101 and the start of my Spirituality 2.0 series, as well as my meditation series, my intuitive lifestyle course, which is the beginnings of my one-on-one -on -one work that I do with my clients. And then there's my client sign up. If you are ready to heal, grow, and expand, really, really ready, I wanna help you do that. And you can sign up by either just emailing me or filling out the link, filling out the form through that link in the description. May the energy you serve, serve you well, and let's keep making our way through.